This is the Samsung Note 10 Plus, but the pen is not our focus. So let's slide it back into the slot where it belongs. Nice and snug. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thiel. I'm a display reviewer and professional calibrator. Today, we're taking a look at the picture quality of the Samsung Note 10 Plus. It uses a 6.8 inch OLED screen with Pentile diamond subpixel structure, but it's very unlikely that you will be able to see the Pentile layout with your naked eye, thanks to a very high pixel density of 498 pixels per inch or PPI. OLED displays tend to exhibit a blue tint of axis, and the Samsung Note 10 Plus is no exception. Although the off-center tinting is fairly mild and generally not noticeable outside a full white screen. Screen uniformity is affected slightly too. Because the Note 10 Plus features dual-sided curved edges, if you use the phone in a landscape orientation to watch videos, as you bloody should, the top and bottom borders will look marginally bluer and darker than the rest of the screen. The OLED screen is not immune to image retention, which can be seen after displaying a bright white box for 5 seconds. But there are various measures available on the phone, such as the screen switching off after a certain period of inactivity, as well as dark mode, which can reduce the risk of permanent screen burn. Before moving on to some measurements, we would like to point out one very easy to miss setting that is critical to extract the maximum performance from the Samsung Note 10 Plus. On the settings page, scroll down to device care, tap on battery, tap on power mode, and you will need to switch from the factory default setting of optimized to high performance mode. Otherwise, you will not be able to enjoy the highest screen resolution of 3040 x 1440 pixels or the highest peak brightness in brighter conditions with adaptive brightness engaged. To measure the colors, we first used our Jetty 1511 reference spectrometer to not only profile our client K80 colorimeter, but also capture the spectral power of distribution, which showed beautifully distinct red, green, and blue waveforms, allowing for wider color gamut coverage. As a result, our review sample reached nearly 100% of DCI-P3 UV and more than 80% of REC2020, which is higher than the iPhone 11 Pro Max and any other OLED TV on the market currently. That said, achieving a wider color gamut is one thing. Whether the color tracking is accurate within the triangle is an entirely different matter. We'll discuss this later on in this video. There are two screen modes on the Samsung Note 10 Plus which mainly affects the picture output for SDR content. The default is natural, which is more accurate to the standards used within the film and broadcast industry, with adaptive brightness and blue light filter disabled, as well as brightness set to max. Peak luminance measured 370 nits on an 18% window, with fairly accurate grayscale throughout the entire luminance range. However, Gamma tracked closer to 2.2 for the most part, with a dip near black and near white to give a more contrasty but less accurate look. On this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 color patches were measured, average delta error measured 2.08 though with a number of inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3. Switching to vivid screen mode would increase maximum brightness to 490 nits on an 18% window. Overall gamma closer to beyond 2.4 for more pop, as well as expand the color space to the full gamut of the display, which is oversaturated for SDR viewing. Within the vivid mode, you can adjust the white balance to make the color temperature cooler or warmer, and there's even a single point RGB slider control. On our review unit, dropping blue by 5 ticks and green by 3 produced the most accurate grayscale. But since a vivid mode uses an inaccurate, oversaturated color gamut for SDR content, we very much prefer to stick to natural mode. As expected, enabling blue light filter would cut down the blue light spectrum emitted by the screen for better eye comfort, but would result in an overly warm image which deviates from accuracy. Adaptive brightness automatically changes the light output based on your previous adjustments in similar ambient lighting conditions. 
And the good news is, grayscale accuracy is largely preserved according to our measurements regardless of how dark or how bright it is. Interestingly, engaging adaptive brightness then bumping brightness to max can increase peak luminance even further. In this DIY rig to simulate high ambient light conditions, we reached 517 nits in natural mode and 640 nits in vivid mode on an 80% window for SDR viewing. There is also a little known video enhancer function which didn't make any difference in our test pattern measurements. For HDR, the Samsung Note 10 Plus seemed to use a separate picture output that's independent of screen mode or blue light filter, although it's necessary to crank brightness up to max for the highest peak luminance. Using HDR10 test pattern from Diversified Video Solutions or Ryan Masiola, we measured almost 1100 nits on a 10% window, which is higher than the 880 nits we obtained from the iPhone 11 Pro Max. However, PQ EOTF tracked brighter than the ST2084 standard, and DCI-P3 color points within a Rec2020 container were also somewhat oversaturated. Unsurprisingly, these findings manifest themselves in actual viewing. We played the Spears and Mansell demo footage in HDR10 on the Samsung Note 10 Plus placed in front of a calibrated LG OLED. We haven't seen Samsung and LG being this near to each other outside a courtroom. And the Note 10 Plus consistently looked brighter and more saturated. The phone also crushed some shadow detail near black according to this HDR10 black clipping test pattern and exhibited visible posterization in various color ramp patterns from diversified video solutions, which occasionally transferred to real-world content. The resolution from the YouTube app can be bumped up to 1440p, and if you zoom in to fill up the screen, the front camera punch hole is less noticeable than the notch on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Thanks to OLED's true blacks and high peak brightness, HDR videos from YouTube and Netflix generally looked good, with sufficient HDR impact. In summary, the Samsung Note 10 Plus produces a punchy if slightly inaccurate HDR picture, and I'm seeing some interesting results in a side-by-side -side comparison with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which I will outline in a separate video in the very near future. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.